So I'm going to try my best to make this quick. Uh, Antonio Subarats or whatever the hell his name is. Well, he's, he's, he's lying to you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not bad enough that uh, he put out some bad information uh, and claimed it to be true. And when I went in and showed him that he was wrong and then showed him his work and how he was wrong, he came back and said that because I did it on a computer, which is far more accurate than sticking things to a globe, he decided that I was actually wrong. And the funny part was is that he said he was going to go back and do my measurements to show everybody that I was wrong, which is kind of ironic because my measurements were the measurements that he proposed. And so if he was going to go back and redo them, that means he didn't do them right the first time. Antonio wanted to make sure that everybody uh, uh, knew that I did it on a computer and not on a globe. Funny enough, I don't possess a globe. I don't have one. I haven't had one since I was a kid. But strangely enough, for a guy who claims that the earth is flat, he possesses two of them, at least. So that's interesting enough. But <clears throat> since I wasn't going to go out and spend $25, $35 on a globe just to prove this stupid video, I decided I was just going to go real easy and... Put longitude latitude lines on a round foam ball and it was going real nice did everything it needed to do but i personally i i wasn't satisfied with the appearance of it even though it was accurate and i even went forward and marked off the four positions plus the position of the sun was located but again it was without the visual cues so i went online to get cutouts for how to surface a globe then i modified those to show longitude and latitude lines so I can get all my bearings correct. Now I printed out one half of the earth. This was the only half of the earth that was relevant. I didn't want to go into the very long process of cutting these things out because it was actually quite tedious. And then once I cut them out and taped them together and then I applied them to the foam ball. This ball is made of a type of foam similar to like Nerf or something like that and the tape was not sticking very well. So I wrapped the whole thing in cellophane. I made sure that where I put everything and where I taped everything down, it stayed there. And then I proceeded to get down to business, and I marked off all the four locations for the original locations that Antonio laid out in his first video. Then I went back on the computer, and I printed out a couple of compasses. I put on here very specifically the names of each one of the compasses. I put an arrow drawing north, and of course a line showing exactly where the position is supposed to be for each compass. I did this because I knew I was going to be cutting these things out, so I had to make sure that all my orientations were correct. So I printed them out. Then I came up with a very simple idea. I took barbecue skewers. Sorry, but uh, I knew I was going to be using hot glue and hot glue and spaghetti do not mix very well. But I used hot glue and I glued the barbecue skewers to the lines that they were supposed to be glued to. Then after letting that set, I glued a pin to each one of them to the exact pivot point, And then I covered the entire area with hot glue, basically making it a small solid structure. It can't be bent, can't be turned, can't be twisted, can't be manipulated. And then I went on and did the same thing for the other three. And then I took the pin and put it in the middle of the 360 degree compass, lined it up to the line for each particular location per the information given on the first video by Antonio, and glued them all into place. Did that with each individual one. Then I cut all those out because it would have been a little awkward to have big huge compasses on there. And I put the pin in the middle of each one of the locations. And then I oriented the locations to have the red arrow pointing north relative to each one. Something else here of note, according to timeanddate.com, uh, the sun is shown as uh, uh, being just off the northeast coast of Madagascar. And if I look at the globe that I just finished, all of my azimuth lines seem to point to the perigee of the sun. 
which is a wonderful handshake to the accuracy of what I just completed. And if you can see here, none of the elevation sticks cross paths anywhere soon. And what's even more funny is if this looks familiar to anybody, it looks familiar because of the fact that this is what it looked like on my first video when I did it by the computer. And to be honest with you, I'm sure the one on the computer is quite a bit more exact than the one that I did on this globe. Now, something else that I alluded to at the end of my last video was saying that if you have things that point to a target from a sphere using three-dimensional directions, uh, i.e. using azimuth and elevation, and if they all point to something, then they're not going to point to anything when you put them on a flat map. This is basically what it looks like when you plot this on a globe. And this is at the very same time. So either the sun is in four distinct directions, or maybe the sun is about here. Flatten this out and we'll see. Uh so let's go ahead and use the azimuthal equidistant map, otherwise known as the flat earth map. I set up the flat earth map to draw some red lines out from the center or the north pole to the specific directions for each one of the four locations. I also put the sun on there for good measure. I printed that out and took the pins off the globe and put them onto the flat earth map. And as before, I lined them directly up with the north for each location. Now, I only got two in so far, the one in southern Africa and uh, the one in Perth, Australia. And you can already see the problem. They're not pointing at each other at all. They're not meeting up anywhere. They're not even meeting up closely anywhere. And I put the location in India in there as well. And again, they didn't even touch, let alone point in the same directions. And looking directly above here, you can see that it's not happening. It's not, it's, they're not hitting anything. And if you were to lower these to the elevations that Antonio lied to you about, they still don't hit anything. They don't hit each other at all. You can also see by the fact that the azimuths are not all pointing at each other. Nothing is pointing to anything. I also added in a, a small dotted line here to show what the azimuth would have been if I had had the, the Central Africa location. Problem was, by printing this out, uh, it was a little bit too small for me to fit the third one or the fourth one on there. That's what the azimuth would have been right there from looking at it directly above. Now it looks a little bit promising when you look at it from the side, but again, if you look at it from the side and then rotate that, nothing is touching anything. So, in closing, Antonio Subrates, you lied. And he's lying to all of you. Anybody here who's watching this who's a subscriber to Antonio's stuff. And yeah, you tried to punk me out on Globusters. So, Sly Sparkane, you're a fraud. So, you're just talking gibberish like you did with your Globe nonsense. No, I got tired of waiting for you to show what you did wrong. Uh, so I, I put this little video together and to show you in physical form exactly how you, you did it intentionally. You pointed all your spaghetti lines to each other to make it look like that you had something conclusive 
But the bad part is, is that when you did that, you shot yourself in the foot because of the fact that you showed that those angles and elevations actually pointed to something, which means that they would not point to anything on a flat map. Not on a Mercator map, not on a azimuthal equidistant map, nothing. So that means you deliberately lied, just trying to look cool. It's probably why your video also doesn't contain what your angles look like on a flat map. Okay, so as I said before, even if you don't believe the angles that I've produced, 3D angles that point to a target from a sphere, then they will point to nothing in 3D from a plane. The only exception to this would be if the observation points were equidistant from each other on a Mercator map and all looking at a target which is geometrically centered between all of those points. That's the only way it works together. But good luck finding enough of those places on the map. <laughs> so the question is, if he lied to you about this, how many other things has he lied to you about? Think about that. Y'all have a nice day.